welcome to money hangout this is a weekly interaction with you where we try and share perspectives understanding and uh, insights on investment issues we also try and answer as many of your questions uh, today we are going to discuss about why we should invest abroad and uh, so far indian investors have not taken into any uh, you know have not been a bit aggressive investors abroad uh, understandably so uh, india as a mark uh, uh, as a uh, market uh, you know we are just about 3% of global gdp and uh, uh, so so from that standpoint you know the investable options uh, taking taking into account all the markets in the world we are you know uh, if all our money is invested just here it's just about 3% uh, we are invested just in 3% of the of the available options so should it be 100% of your investment uh the reason why we invest in mutual funds uh is to diversify and exactly for the same reason we should be investing abroad we, uh, the first is that you know we are able to de-risk ourselves we have our jobs here we have all our physical assets here and uh, we should we have so why should have we have all our investments here because the whole idea of investment is to uh in you know de-risk ourselves from any likely event uh which and geographic you know diversification can insulate ourselves from any such risk uh th that apart you know <clears throat> today it is possible to be uh, to be able to invest wherever you want to uh, we have plenty of options so dhiren uh, how can an indian investor invest abroad uh indian investors for indian investors in 2003 it, it was permitted to actually <clears throat> launch mutual fund which uh, uh, you know if you invested in those mutual funds you could have invested abroad which which used to invest abroad so that started in 2003 uh, besides that you know indian investors can also invest in stocks or bonds or you know in any any other market even physical assets if you want to buy a house uh, to the to the extent of you know 250000 dollar if per person annually that is the that is the investment limit and it requires just a simple uh you know <clears throat> permission from rbi it is not a very cumbersome thing and you have to operate through a single bank account besides that you can invest in mutual funds and that is not within that two and a half uh, to, <clears throat> excuse me uh to uh, you know 250000 dollars which is approximately you know 1.75 crore today uh so uh, mutual funds are over and above that they don't come in that ambit so you can invest in th these mutual funds as much as you want to plenty of options to choose from today uh, 40 50 funds available to indian investors and uh, investing in these funds are as simple as buying any other mutual funds in india uh, the, the you know three four broad kind of, uh, of funds which are available uh, the options which are available to indian investors are you know some of them are very specific geography the asean or the the, the brazil fund or the us us fund so the, 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 there are geographic uh, funds besides that there are some specific uh, sector funds you know the mining fund the gold fund the gold mining fund so stuff like that uh, which which are specific things then there are a lot of thematic funds uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, the the kind of alternatives available uh, in terms of uh, those options that you know agri, agri uh, business fund the funds which are you know likely to benefit from like uh, you know possible increase in agricultural uh, output or, or, pr or prices uh, besides that you know uh, global consumer opportunity fund so so there are a lot of thematic funds available uh, which and that actually creates a problem investors should be investing abroad but there are plenty to choose from uh, my understanding of you know the logical the, the reason why one should be investing in these funds from that standpoint investor should consider it from three standpoint you know uh, three kind of funds which investor should at most consider uh, and at the at the, and the principle of this selection is that you should always be you know the effort should be to be investing in uh, when you invest in a mutual fund the underlying businesses must be strong uh, you you just diversification for the for the sake of diversification is not a great idea the diversification should, should should be done with an understanding that they are also promising opportunity uh, so uh, 
just don't choose a theme because it looks impressive or it you know the investment case sounds impressive it must be impressive and the underlying business opportunity should be there because we have seen a lot of these thematic funds launched they have uh, they have gone out of favor they they turn out to be fads very fashionable things which did not really prove to be an investment worthy uh, opportunity so i think you know uh, the simplest way of investing uh, abroad is there are some domestic funds which can invest up to 30 35% into uh, in foreign markets so there you get all the benefits of the of a domestic fund the tax benefit and 30 35% so nearly a third of your money can be invested abroad so they are the, uh, to my understanding they are the simplest way of investing abroad second option is that you should be investing in a company in a fund uh, which is which is filled with you know which is stacked with globally competitive businesses and i think uh, there we have couple of options some of there are some global global uh, funds which invest uh, all across from sundaram the the oldest fund the oldest international fund the from principal is one such fund of late it has also been doing well uh, but uh, uh, but the focus should be that you know the underlying businesses uh, should be global uh, businesses and from that standpoint even the us funds the us domicile funds or the us opportunity fund or you know however you call it the fund which invest in the us companies they turn out to be actually global uh, global uh, funds uh, because if, when most of the companies which those funds invest in uh, the underlying businesses are global business so they, these are two three ways of doing it make sure that you are not you are avoiding the fashionable things you are avoiding the stories uh, funds and you are choosing a fund which is which is giving you diversification and the underlying businesses uh, you can relate to that they are competitive large global businesses green one interesting thing about these kind of funds yeah. is that uh, they have assets that are only 1% of the size of equity funds mm -hmm. so why are they not popular among indian investors oh there are a couple of reasons one is that uh, uh, it is not a old story uh, first and foremost it, it started in 2003 and the great indian boom take took place in started in 2004 so ever since indian investors were made available these op alternative uh, the indian market started doing well after you know 10 year of struggling performance uh, so uh, the, the naturally you know investors get attracted and of course the domestic buyers or the home buyers invest indian investors understand the funds much better can relate to the portfolios much better so since 2003 these funds were allowed and since 2004 indian markets markets did very well and indian mutual fund business actually took off since then that that apart there is a tax difference in taxation indian mutual funds which invest fully into indian equities they become completely tax free as compared to these funds which which has to be held for 3 years and they are treated like uh, any other uh, asset so it will be indexed taxed and must be held for 3 years so that's another uh, you know the tax disadvantage so to say compared to domestic funds but this is not you know this is this does not apply apply to those funds which invest up to 35% into foreign stocks so they are those funds are only those funds that are treated as domestic funds and a <coughs> uh, third thing is that you know mutual funds are also responsible mutual funds did not position these funds as you know did not tell the investors that these are these are good vehicles to diversify uh, the, in fact many of these funds were launched and they were sold as you know a tactical opportunity so if when we look at the history of these funds some of these some of the funds actually turn into a very big very large funds it they attracted a lot of investors they turn out to be not a very enduring sto story enduring you know they were not able to sustain the performance for example uh, the largest fund a few years back was the uh, gold mining fund or you know right now the funds which are doing very well are the ones which are not of the mainstream kind so unless until investors you know investors over a period of time try to look at consistent performance and the very design of some of those funds uh, is the such that they are not supposed to provide you consistent performance they are likely to do very well um, in a brief period of time and uh, on other occasion they they don't 